Hey, 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 this is, got my bee hat on for the boat doctor. Anyway, uh, down here, uh, Kyle, don't tell your dad, you know, Bob, or that I'm taking this out. It's pretty rough around the corner here. I'm gonna see what I can do. No, just kidding again. We're gonna do the first fire up. Anyway, uh, I took it down over here by the riverside. You know, and then when I get back, I'll make sure they flush the motors and rewash it down. Uh, Encrosion X. Uh, notice how the boat's away from the dock, and I got the G5s here. You got just a little bit of surface. That light rust, the Encrosion X will take that off. We're gonna do that, but what I would do is like, once a year maybe, spray them seat bases, put a cloth down, spray them down with Corrosion X. Uh, same thing with the motors, inside the motors. Take the cowling, spray the whole motor down with this stuff called Corrosion X. Use, uh, you can use regular ethanol, but I put 40 gallons of non-ethanol with StarTron. Just no matter what you do, put StarTron in it. It's one ounce per 16 gallons. Uh, boat sits really good in the water. I'm gonna fire these things up here pretty quick. Got the bake kit on here. Uh, and I'll be nice to your boat. Trust me, I ain't gonna hurt it. Uh, anyway, I've only ran out 23,000 boats since I started, believe it or not. Uh, anything can happen though. So anyway, the Crozen Act's good stuff. So, so I'm gonna jump in the boat. We're gonna try this kicker first. I pumped up the primer bulb. We're gonna get her down. Lift that there, that's fine. Oh, good, good water flow. That's good, especially when you put a bait kit in. Make sure uh, the water pickups uh, hose is hooked up. And then I always put it in gear, yep, before I take off. And I always start the kicker up first. This is your stop button, trim button. Okay, if this has been sitting for a while, I say, uh, you know, about a month or so, there's every one of these got a little technique to start. What I'd do first of all is put it, like bring this all the way back, put it in gear, give it one to two pumps, bring it back, raise it just beyond this dimple right here, pull the choke out, fire it up, bring the, then push that choke back in, slowly bring this back to about there. Then that is gonna go down, then all of a sudden the idle's gonna go back up again, then just bring it all the way, let it idle. Uh, but I always start these things up before I go anywhere, just because you never know. I could take off and uh, for some odd god reason, maybe the main motor quit. And then I can check here to see if there's any leaks in the bilge. My water would be coming into here. So I'm gonna check that out. War's down, we're gonna hit that. Hey, you can have water fights with this, Kyle. Just gotta wait, there it is, builds up pressure. See right here, that's why I take them out, not a big deal. Tighten that up. See, they're just little things. Ooh, you can have water fight. <laughs> that works. Okay, now you hear that pump? Now, if that pump was on like this, and that thing started going on, on, that means you probably got a water leak somewhere. And this, if you have the hose off, make sure you turn this off, because if you don't, when you're going down the water, it's gonna spray water in your boat. And this is your fish box. That's nice and big. You can bleed a lot of tuna in there if you wanted to. And then again, that valve, you open up and you let the water out. So I showed you a lot of that. Okay, that's trimmed out. See if this big one will start. Now these will spool up start is what they'll do. This one's fuel ejected, of course. All you do is turn the key like this and release it. No need to hold it one second and that thing will spool and start. Okay, got a half tank of gas. Bills work, horn works. Wipers work. Light, they work. You don't have deck or that. The trim tabs, you're gonna hear that noise when you turn the key on or off. They're gonna automatically go all the way up. Good water flow out of that. And before I take off, I always put it in gear. Yep. And the reason is I've just taken this boat out for the first time, so I'm gonna make sure all the uh, latches are pinned down on the cable so I have gears to back up. If not, I can go forward and not go anywhere. Then I do the steering left, right, right, left. Make sure there's no slop in it. And that feels good. Then I get out. I always untie the back first and I use one rope because then I can pull it in. I can step on that. 
and it's kind of hard to do just with I'm gonna get me a goat pro one of these days I got one but it, it ain't the good one then see how I can just pull it in like that then it'll drift away from the dock just put it in gear and it first run just fired up what do you think of this Kyle huh look how nice this backs up we got a lot of current tides going out a little wind out of the south and it is carrying me over to that pylon so that's a good thing then I'll disconnect this baby so I'm probably all over the map right now yep put that baby there I'm trying to detach my phone there we go and let's see if we can't see something right here okay I'm gonna try something not that this probably has it but I'm gonna hit the T right here this set button the T brings up you hit the mode button see which I don't think it has it nope Okay, that's VTS. This is a 6Y8 gauge. But it should have lit up. A lot of the 250s don't do it. Yeah, so anyway, 600, 700 to 600, and then you got about 650 in gear. Just reading the 600. You go into mode, that gives you your water, your water temp, that gives you your battery, and then you can kick this T off because he ain't going to need it anyway. And let's see, where should we go? Like I say, I'll be kind of nice to you. I'll run it up this way. Oh, ho, 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 silly me. Tyler, you got to have a ball in this. So are you, Bob. I heard you don't get to drive it anyway. Pull in the bumpers. Take this, slide the seat gently over here take this bumper in right here so you don't scrape the side of your boat there you go okay so then I'm just gonna run it like this for a few seconds about 1500 to 2000 wipers off oh you're gonna have power I can feel it oh now here's the thing I was talking to you Bob too about this okay now this is aluminum right I'm gonna put it in gear we're at 600 typically right here if you have stainless it will vibrate really bad not really bad but it's noticeable but see I get a slight one right there but now if this was aluminum, it normally at a thousand it goes away right there. But if this was stainless, you would definitely feel that. Then the next one is right here about 2200. And I was talking with you about this the other day when you're in. Because a lot of people run right here. No vibration. Next spot would be 3000. Nope. Feel it there. Then the next spot would be about five to six thousand. And then I'll run it like this for just a little bit at 3,800. And uh, okay, say you were running like this all day long, about 38, 4,000 RPMs, and I'll have all the speed on here too. Right now I don't have my uh, GPS, but I will tell you max speed and all that. Because on your uh, GPS, you, you're going to have speed over ground anyway. But if you run at this all day long, at the end of the day, open this thing wide open for about the last five minutes uh, back to dock where you can. Like from here way down there, I'd run her wide open to clean this baby up. Same thing with that kicker motor. Yeah, real quiet, dry, smooth. So then what I do here is I'm going to take this off right here. Then I do seconds to plane, but then a lot of this I'm going to write down later. 
but for right now this is just a video for you because I fill out all these sheets on your QA okay so you stop <laughs> Kyle, wait to see this one. Ready, ready, everything's buttoned down. 1,001, 1,002, two seconds. Two to 2.5, watch out for the logs too, by the way. They're floating in here. Two to 2.5, that's excellent. At 38, probably about, say 20, 25 miles an hour. Okay, planing speed. is right about here and this is how I do my checks right here and these things have been run for two hours at the factory anyway I'm just on play now about 29 3,000 that's probably about 18 miles an hour 18 19 okay so now I'm gonna do a cruising and then I listen to the motor I don't look at the tack yet I trim it up oh this thing's smooth you're gonna like it Bob okay cruising speed Right about there, about 4,700, 45 to 4,700, trimmed up maybe halfway. You can bring that back down, right there. So 43 to 4,500 would be good. Now this here, you're probably doing 30 miles an hour, right there. Okay, so I open it up now and I'm gonna see you on the front. 5,900, 6,000, right where I want it. That 17 pitch is perfect. Now I'm gonna back it off, so I only had it there for maybe, oh, not even, shoot, four seconds. So I didn't ramrod this. Uh, but I say, you know, you get a couple hours out and don't troll for two hours. Uh, oh, there's another thing I was gonna do too. I'm gonna trim, make sure you trim it all the way down. Okay, and then what you wanna do is a, a takeoff, which we did, and it didn't cavitate, like right here. Nope, no blowout. So then you want to stop here at a slow speed. And then you want to be able to hit this thing. Yeah, see? So you may... It ain't, it ain't bad. But that's where the stainless would come in, on that turn. So if you may want to put up with that vibration if you want. But it ain't bad, but you figure you're gonna go like this, you got a following C, so you're gonna turn, you wanna hit that. Yeah, that's not bad, that's not bad. So you can go either way. If you want more bite on the turn, then I'd say go to the stainless, but right here, if I was going, you'd be only going about this, then you'd be making the turn anyway. Then if I hit it, Yeah, it's blowing out just a little bit right there. So that's your call. I would try it, then go to a stainless, and you'd have a backup. Uh, run the whatever one you want to run. Uh, but if you're just out in the ocean, maybe stick with the stainless, but you will have a little vibration. Uh, but that's at the lower end. But it ain't it ain't a real killer, you know. Uh, certain boats it is, but then again, no uh, porpoise at all on this boat. Wide open, you can take take your hands off the steering wheel and I'm gonna just barely let this run for a minute and you can go to the back of the boat steers good bring it back there you go I'm being easy on it so I'm gonna try that turn one more trim all the way down you won't be going this fast you'll be going about like this maybe then you'll be turning sharp and if you hit it yeah I don't know I may swing uh, to that stainless I think try the aluminum and then uh, get a stainless try the stainless and see what you prefer but the main thing is like when you're making a turn if that stainless will help you then stick with the stainless out in the ocean you start using this like in lakes, rivers, and stuff, I'd go back to the aluminum. Because if you hit any debris, you could do some damage. All right.
Uh, now I got to do the kicker motor. Ooh, God, we're in the 14 minutes already. Part three.